is once a pastor, always a pastor? Or is once disqualified as a pastor, always disqualified? Well, the answer to both questions is no. Every week, if not every day, we find some pastor who has found themselves to be disqualified from being a pastor either because of some sort of sin or heretical teaching. The question is, if a person becomes disqualified, do they remain disqualified forever? Similarly, if a person is a pastor and he stops pastoring for a while, if he just retires, is he also a pastor? This question has been brought up from time to time. And so I want to address those because the answer to both of those questions is the same. And the answer might shock some people. The answer is no. Surprisingly to some people, you'll find out that the Bible doesn't really address this issue of when a person has been put down because of sin or because of some sort of uh, doctrinal failures or moral failures. We don't have an example of that. Now, we do have some guidance from the Bible that I think would be appropriate and it works for both. So let's say a person has been pastoring and all of a sudden stops for whatever reason. Maybe they took a break, uh, the church fault, who knows, so many different things. And for the next four, five, 10 years, is that person still a pastor? Well, the answer to that question is no, he is not a pastor. A pastor is a shepherd. It's just like asking yourself this question this way, is a shepherd a shepherd if he's not shepherding sheep? Well, no, that's not what he is. And I understand that some folks want to hold on to a title and that's gonna be the problem wanting to hold on to the title for the sake of the title. But if that's not what you're practicing, that's not what you're practicing. A retired football player is a retired football player, not a current football player. Some people might want to honor the person, which is fine. If they want to show honor and some gratitude and call the person pastor so-and-so, I don't think that's really a problem. But in point of fact, the person is not a pastor. What about a person also who was formerly one and for some moral sin, some moral failing or something else, is no longer a pastor. He's been stripped of that. So let's look at the scriptures and let's just see. First, let's go to the qualifications. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul says it's a trustworthy statement if a man aspires. And so this is him deciding that I think that I should do this. There is a calling. And I use this word calling kind of loosely because scripturally there is no such thing as a calling, though you would have to assume that a person who is a pastor is someone who is, if they are a true pastor, a true shepherd that God has gifted them in some areas. And so if a person wants to use the word calling, I don't have a problem with that, but I do caution someone saying that I've been called, the Lord called me to this. Well, we'll find out because the other qualifications will kind of show this. He must, an overseer must be above reproach, uh, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or pugnacious, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. He must be able to manage his own household. Otherwise, how can he manage the church of God? Also, he must not be a new convert. Uh, otherwise, he might become conceited. We've seen that happen. People who are young take over or get involved in the ministry and they just kind of maybe it's some success and it goes to their head. We've seen that happen. Uh, he must also have a good reputation with those outside the church. Now, what I want you to notice is what the condition of the elder, the, the presbyter, what the, what the condition of the pastor, the shepherd must be. Well, these are present tense. This person must be, must be. It is necessary for this person to be, and this word right here, uh, and I, it is, it is present tense, it's to exist, it's right now. So what Paul is trying to get across to Timothy to, as he's putting out these qualifications, this speaks of what a person is now. Paul couldn't be talking about what a person was because if that were the case, then no one would qualify. You could not say if a person, uh, this person at one point in time was never above reproach. Well, some at some point in time, he probably was uh, someone who had fallen into reproach. Uh, he must be the husband of one wife. What this refers to is not that he's been divorced. And I know that's a stain and some folks want to point that out, but that's just not what this part uh, passage means. Does not mean that he's uh, divorced. We do have words for that in the Bible. We have Greek words for that. But in this case, it's uh, the husband of one wife. It's uh, Mias Ganaikas uh, Andras, which is a one woman male. So he must be a male. These are conditions. All of these are things that can change. Obviously, the male portion can't change. 
but these other qualifications can change. The reason why that's important is these are right now conditions. So right now, at him being a pastor, he must be above reproach. He must be the husband of one wife. He must be temperate. He must, if any of these things change, if it gets to the point to where he is no longer above reproach, then he is not qualified. If it gets to the point to where he is not able to teach or he is not hospitable, whatever the qualification is, if he is not that at this moment, then he is not qualified. Should he ever become qualified? Well, that's another story. If he's not qualified today, but in a year, in five years, could he then become a pastor? Or if he used to be a pastor and these things have been removed from him, could he become a pastor again? Well, sure. Now, sometimes what we do is we kind of prioritize or we highlight certain issues above others. Here's what I mean. Let's say if a person right now is uh, going through some issues and he is just not very temperate and he's just not very hospitable and he knows that and he steps away for that just to work on that. Well, many people would be ready to forgive that and allow him back if he spent some time away and kind of worked on himself, uh, got a, a better disposition. And so you might say, OK, I can handle him coming back. Some might might say that other things that he's involved in or has done, we won't forgive those things or we will forgive, but we won't allow him to come back. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about those things. The Bible doesn't tell us that if a person is removed from being a pastor, that he can't come back. As a matter of fact, there's no examples of a person in the Bible being a pastor, an elder, and then being removed. We don't have one example. So how do we move forward? Well, again, these are the criteria. But what happens if a person meets this criteria right now, but there's something we're just not we're we're not comfortable with them? Well, that's where the two issues have to show up that are in the qualifications. One, he must be above reproach. That's for the body. If the body feels as though that whatever his sin was, whatever the issue is, they're not comfortable, then and that's how we look at him then we can't have him in. Similarly, if the outside public also views him this way, he has to have a certain view by the outside. Why? Because we want to bring the outside in. We want people who are not saved to become saved. And so when they look and see this pastor who all they can think of is his past, his sins, his lies, his, whatever it is, then that can be a problem. And that's something that the pastor or the aspiring pastor, he can't control. That is from the crowd to look at. They have to accept you. Otherwise, how can you lead them? So we don't have that as a qualification, but if a person used to be a pastor, stops pastoring, do we call that person a pastor? Well, again, we're talking about a shepherd. He's not shepherding, so we don't call him that. However, should he, wants to come, should he want to come back in and be a shepherd? By all means, as long as he qualifies, then so be it. Now, we would need to look and see why he stopped being a shepherd. That might be an issue that might need to be addressed, but that's for that particular local body or the whole body writ larger. If, if, if the case ever allows for us to, uh, as a whole, look at a person. But if a person is no longer pastoring, we don't call that person pastor. You can call that person pastor just for, for the sake of just being, you know, being pleasant, uh, being nice, showing some honor and deference. That's fine. But, uh, actually in point of fact, he's not a pastor. Now, Guiding us is what Peter says. Now think about what Peter said. Peter is saying that we should shepherd the flock, uh, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God and not for sordid gain with eagerness. What if they don't do that, though? Now, Peter is someone who we've seen an issue with him when he uh, pulled away from the Gentiles because of the Jews. Is that a bit prejudicial, uh, a bit uh, racist, some might say? Maybe. But does that mean that Peter had to sit down? Was Peter now unqualified? No, because we're going to look at something that happened with Paul. Paul tells us himself that he is a man who had some struggles. What they were, we don't really know. But look what he says. He says in chapter 7 of Romans, starting in verse 18, he says, I know that nothing good dwells in me. Now, we're going to take him at his word. And he's speaking. This is not Paul in the past before he was converted. Paul, the verbs that are used here are right now. Paul is speaking of present tense, what's happening with him now. He says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for the willing is present in me, but the doing is not good. For the good that I want, I do not do, but the but I practice the very thing 
It's what I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells me. Now, this is Paul making the statement. Well, what was the sin? Well, we don't know. The issue is, though, it goes back to his desires. And so you're going to have men who might be pastoring, who might do some things that are wrong. Pastors are going to sin. You won't find a pastor that will not sin. But Paul makes a point. He uses this word, this word, thalane or thaleo, which is, or thalo, which is to desire. My, his desires are to do good. He might still sin, but his desires eventually will overcome that sin. But the point is, does he desire to do something? Now, this is something we can't really tell. I can't tell, you can't tell if a particular pastor is desiring these things. Um, but hopefully his actions will bear out that what his actual desires are. So Paul had struggles according to his own words, but Paul was never disqualified. So we have to kind of, we have to be very, very careful on two fronts. One, who becomes a pastor? They took this very serious, which is why we didn't see, I would, I would uh, suspect, we didn't see people who became pastors, who became elders, who became um, uh, uh, overseers of a church who did not fall because they took it that serious. We also understood that there were going to be some times, some moments where they might do something or say something and they're not held to a standard that only Jesus could meet. So if a person in this case, in the, in the scriptures, if a person decided to become a pastor, that was taken seriously. People watched you. People were, you, your lifestyle and your light was very important. You were an example. That's why Peter says in, in 1 Peter 5, remembering that the great shepherd is going to come and then in turn give you a reward, which is one of the things that James says. He says, let not many of you become teachers. By the way, a pastor is a pastor teacher, according to Ephesians 4.11. He says, my brother, knowing that as such, we will incur a stricter judgment. Now that could be on earth and certainly before the Lord. There are a lot of people that, that function as pastors right now who should not be there, who are ungodly people, who might be fooling some people, but God knows. But ultimately, though, God is going to protect his, his sheep, which is one of the reasons why you let folks know if some pastor is doing or saying something that goes contrary to the scriptures. And then before we go, there's one other pastor that pastors that people might turn to. That's 1 Timothy chapter 5. At verse 19, it says, do not receive an accusation against an elder except on the basis of two or three witnesses. A little bit higher standard when it comes to the elder. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest also will be fearful of sinning. Now, the question is, is this verse 20 referring to the elder? Kind of hard to say, but I'll, I'll go ahead and assume that it is. And so if it is, then you rebuke that sinning elder in the presence of all. But you know what it didn't say? It, it doesn't tell us that we set him, we sit him down, that we remove him for a time. I think it's proper that if a person is going through something, they need to be restored. If anyone is caught in a trespass, and I think this applies to an elder, then you who are spiritual restore such a one. However, can he be restored? There are all the different qualifications that he has to meet. When does he have to meet the qualifications? It's not as though that you met the qualifications 20 years ago and you still meet them today. That's the reason why a person who was a pastor who stopped for, not for sin or bad doctrine, is still not a pastor. He has to meet those qualifications. It's not as though that that person is grandfathered in or that they fill the application and then you are perpetually a pastor. That's not how this works. If you were qualified in 1990, you must still be qualified in 2020, in 2030. If you took a break and you come back, we need to see, are you still qualified? The same process holds true if a person was removed for whatever reason. We need to see if you qualify. And it's very strict, and sometimes it can be subjective according to the view of the people. If the people, he qualifies in every regard except for how the people, the non-believers and the believers see him, then he's just not qualified. That's out of his control. And I think that's the way it should be. So to answer the question for both, can a pastor who's been removed come back? He can. Can a pastor who stopped on his own still become a pastor again? He can. But do either one of those or either one of those perpetual Perpetually disqualified, perpetually qualified? No. You have to meet the qualifications always. And if at any point in time you don't meet those qualifications, then you are by definition disqualified. Amen. Amen.